Hey guys, welcome back to Rain to Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a video in-depth look on our bushcraft survival knife and some skills. We're going to demonstrate modifications we can make to the knife to make it better for us in the field, some skills for firecraft, woodcraft, as well as harvesting food and processing game out on the landscape. Stand by. Now the best survival knife is going to be the one that is in our pockets or on us. That's going to be the best one, the one we carry consistently. However we can, look for cheap, reliable survival knives like this Mora Companion for our survival kit to add as a survival knife. One, it is still reliable, a very good knife to have, but if we drop this or lose it or it's taken from us for some reason, we're not going to be out that much money as part of our kit if we happen to lose this knife. But a good survival knife is going to be one that is four to five inches in cutting surface, that blade length. This blade is Scandi grind, giving us the opportunity to carve as well as process game in the field. It's about one eighth inch thick high carbon steel so it's a thin knife but that carbon steel gives us an added fire starter as part of our kit the blade width is just about an inch or so it is not a full tang knife it is a rat tail tang meaning the rat tail tang is actually going to end somewhere right about here in the handle but the handle is rubberized great for holding in cold climates or if we have poor dexterity or we're exhausted in survival and this knife is relatively cheap lightweight can be thrown inside a kit and will do everything for us in a survival situation but we can take this knife and we can actually prep this knife and sheath combination to improve our survival kit as well as add to this in case we ditch the rest of our components in our kit we still have our knife to actually give us a survival tool or a small survival kit to take with us in the field the very first thing we want to do with a more companion or a high carbon steel knife like this for a modification is to simply Take that knife, plant it in our anvil here, and then grab a file. And we want to file away the back of that knife in one direction, removing the rounded spine and giving us a nice 90 degree edge spine. We want that 90 degree edge spine because we want to use this as a striker with our survival kit. That way, if we lose our striker or we opt not to carry a striker for our ferro rod, we have a built-in striker with that spine. An important note is that we always file away from ourselves in one direction. We're not crossing and sawing into this with the file, we're actually pushing it away. And we're gonna create a burr on one side of the knife. And we want that burr to be on the side of the knife that we're naturally gonna use as a striker. I'm right-handed, so I prefer to hold the knife like this in my hand, which means I'm gonna strike my ferro rod this way. So I want the burr to be on this side of the spine itself. And now that we have that good 90 degree spine, we can test it out with our ferro rod and our mora. And you see, we can strike sparks easily enough to ignite tinder. With that 90 degree edge, we can ignite fine tinder or man-made tinder like this cotton ball and Vaseline. Long-lasting tinder, very easy, which is the simple survival knife with that 90 degree spine and then our ferro rod gives us a way to start fire in the field reliable safe easy to use good to go now another tip because we have that 90 degree edge on our spine we can actually use this as a scraper as well for a variety of different tenders bark from trees but also from fatwood we can gather fatwood in the area and then make simple shavings out of that fat wood using that spine. We just scrape this up, clean off the spine get it in a nice little pile here before the wind blows it away and then using again the striker which is the 90 degree spine our ferro we can simply ignite that fat wood into a long lasting tinder source and flame extender with additional fat wood and we've got fire 
Now besides that 90 degree spine, there is already another fire starter as part of this knife already built in. And that is the etching of the Mora logo emblem that is on our knife. You can see that there, the emblem, Mora knife, and then made in Sweden, carbon steel marking the type of metal of the blade. That is actually a fire starter for us. And how we now we're just going to take out our military match safe, remove our cotton tinder, and then dump out a few strike anywhere matches. Replace that tinder inside. It also helps hold the matches in place so they don't rub against each other and spontaneously combust in part of our safe. But we can take these strike anywhere matches now with the etching on the knife itself and simply light our strike anywhere match, cup it in our hands, and we can use this to get a fire going as well if we carry a wide variety of matches as part of our survival kit. After we have that 90 degree spine on there to act as a striker with our ferrule rod, and we learned about the trick with lighting matches with the Mora knife emblem on the blade itself, now we want to improve upon the sheath that we have here. This plastic sheath could be used as a flame extender in an emergency, but we want to add items to the sheath in order to make this not only a survival tool, but a small survival kit in and of itself. How we do that is by adding paracord. We add paracord and we simply whip around the sheath itself. To create a simple whipping, all we have to do is create a bite in our cordage, lay it down the length of our sheath, and then just simply wrap around, keeping it tight, get a few wraps in, and then cinch it up, dress the whipping, and we just continue to go around the sheath until we reach the bottom of our loop, dressing the whipping occasionally. We go all the way down, making sure it's tight, and we can stop wherever we feel comfortable. We'll stop right there, take our knife, cut the cord, place that tag through the loop of our whipping, and all we have to do is come up to the top, simply grab and tighten down on our whipping. Pull it underneath to keep it tight, and then from here, we can cut off the tag end on both sections, grab our lighter, and then simply melt the tag end, press it on so it doesn't come off, and then we do the same thing to the other side. Press it in, and we're good to go. But wait, there's more. Now, we have our whipping of paracord. We could leave it like this if we want. However, we can take bike inner tube and create what are called ranger bands. We just take out our knife. We want to cut about an inch section of this rubber. And we're going to make three of these. There's two. Then that third one we can make just a little bit thinner. And so we have our three ranger bands. We have a small one or a thinner one, and we have two thick ones. That thin one is going to go up around the belt loop, the plastic belt loop on the sheath, and act as a security strap for our knife so this doesn't fall out. Over time what tends to happen is that the little button inside the sheath that holds the blade in tends to wear down along with the handle itself and these knives can eventually fall out of the sheath. In order to stop that from happening, all we have to do is take one of the inner tubes or ranger bands, slide it up over, and then bring it down around the handle. And now we have a way to secure the knife in the sheath. If the plastic inside, as well as the handle of the knife that applies the friction in the sheath to keep the knife in place wears out over time, we have another way to actually secure that knife, plus this rubber is a good fire starter or flame extender in an emergency situation. Now for these other two Ranger bands, they're gonna sit one on bottom and one on top of the cordage around the sheath. So what we do, we put that to the side. We're just gonna stretch these out a little bit. 
Now we can take one and simply slide it over that cordage, that whipping of paracord around our sheath. And this helps hold it in place. And then we can take the other one and we'll remove the knife for this. We'll start from the top and go all the way down. And just right over top of that cordage like that. Put the blade back, secure the blade, and now here is our finished product. One additional thing we should probably do is find a better way to carry this in the field. Carrying this on our belt will eventually snap this belt loop off because it is plastic. So we can come up with a creative way to still carry this in the belt configuration while giving us the flexibility to have this dangle and not rip off the belt clip that is part of the sheath. So what we can do is take some more of our paracord. I'm gonna burn the ends, take out our knife, and we want probably a good four or five inches right here. So what we do is just create a simple bite in that cordage right over left. And we're just going to create just a simple overhand knot like that, tying it to itself. We just simply rotate this 180 degrees so we have the other tag in, same way we started with the other one. We go around create a simple overhand knot. This is going to give us a fisherman's knot, basically just a simple loop. We can pull down on this, tighten it, and this simple loop is going to act as our new belt attachment. You'll notice that the ranger band sits flat, so if we want to keep that ranger band off while we're using this knife to put it in and out of the sheath, we can do that fairly easily. And all we have to do now with this simple loop we created is slide it up underneath that belt clip and we have a way to carry this knife on our belt that is flexible and won't break off that clip of the sheath. Good to go. Now, besides using the 90 degree edge of our spine of the knife to act as a striker for our ferrule rod, and even the etching of more knife on the surface of the blade to act as a striking surface for our Strike Anywhere matches, this knife is high carbon steel. That means we can use it as an impromptu flint and steel kit by taking a hard rock and driving sparks off the back of our knife to ignite fine tinder like char material. Just like that. A survival knife, especially a Scandi grind knife, is good for is making feather sticks. A technique is to find a dead standing tree like this, preferably soft wood, although this is a little bit harder. We can shelter this opening that we've created with our bodies in case it's raining or snowing, and then just begin carving feather sticks. And this technique gives us the ability to harvest and create feather sticks off the ground in case there's snow or the ground is wet because it's raining. We shield it with our body as best as possible to protect these feather sticks from the rain or from the snow. And now we can just simply take our ignition source, light these, and if we have smalls or twigs and a bunch of material already to go, we can use this, light it on the tree as it sits, light our fire material using this. This will eventually go out and then we can transfer that flame from that small bundle to our larger sources. And then obviously the main purpose of this blade is to manipulate materials with the actual edge of the blade. And when we do that to get at least a fire going, among other things, is by carving friction fire set off the landscape. 
and we can use that cordage from our sheath to act as the cordage for the bowstring itself to help us get that fire going. But we can finish up this set by simply carving the notch. A great technique for this is to simply saw in, keeping our fingers away, and begin carving out the material, pushing in and slicing, similar to how we would slice a piece of bread. Very easy. We can also use our knife to actually harvest saplings, making just a simple cut at where the sapling is just going to naturally bend. If we need to use it for whatever tools or woodcraft we're going to use this sapling for, it could be for the bow, for our bowstring, for our bow drill set. All we do is bend the sapling over, find where it naturally wants to curve, and then simply bite in. As you can see, bending that sapling over and cutting against the grain with our knife, we get one nice, neat cut to harvest the sapling one time. Very low expenditure of calories. Now we can take this sapling and use it for whatever we need to out in the field. We harvested that sapling off the landscape, and we're going to put it to good use by carving and demonstrating the wide variety of notches that we can create using just a simple tri-stick. With this, we can carve away a trimmed end, a round reduction, a square or cabin notch. We can go through the pot hanger notch. We can also do a V or saddle notch, finish off with an L7 trigger, and then a spade end to complete this tri-stick, demonstrating the versatility of just having a simple bushcraft or survival knife like this companion. We don't necessarily need larger tools to actually construct different things or harvest material, and we can get it all done with just this basic knife, and we're going to demonstrate that even more in the next clip. We can use this simple survival knife, cheap, reliable, very sharp, to go ahead and carve even basic notches. Not only can we use this knife for fine tasks, we can use it for hard and rough tasks as well, just like batoning into large material to break down that material for firecraft. We can also take our knife and with simple physics, adding a baton or mass to the back of our knife, we can actually use this to take down larger diameter material just by doing a simple beaver chew. Once we chew in a few times, we'll either hear a snap or we'll feel that material start to loosen like it is right now. We can sheathe our knife and then all we have to do is simply pull and separate the material. And we just fell the tree with our small survival knife. And of course, one of the primary tasks of our survival knife is processing game in the field to make a meal in order to get food and sustenance and be able to survive. One of the other things a survival knife is going to do for us is allow us to get into some food, some wild edibles. This is the pawpaw fruit of the pawpaw tree and it's not quite ripe 
yet, but it's almost in season. It's got a lot of large seed pods inside, but we can crack this open and all the white fleshy material is going to be the fruit. You can tell this isn't quite ripe yet, but these right here are the seeds and we can sprinkle those out to help propagate the pawpaw tree species and hopefully get a few more trees growing over the next several years. But all this stuff inside is edible and it's food for a survivor. Now, this pawpaw fruit is not ripe yet, but here in another month or so, once autumn begins and we start to have a little bit of fall weather, these are gonna ripen up and begin to fall from the trees, giving us some good food source on the ground. A lot of animals go after the pawpaw and Native Americans used to go after the pawpaw as well. It's a cross between some sort of melon and I would describe maybe a pepper. Um, it's got a chalky texture to it right now. It's still sweet, but it's not quite ripe. Here, shortly, we should have some pretty good ripe pawpaw fruit ready to go. All right, guys, that was a very in-depth look at our bushcraft survival knife modifications, techniques, firecraft, toolcraft, harvesting materials off the landscape, as well as processing food and game. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.